so guys welcome to leaves and lungs i hope your preparation is going really well so exactly a month left for your prelims and uh, and i hope like everyone is reading uh, out of the heart and lungs uh, for the preparation so guys so today we're going to start a new series that is hot shot series so like every year there's been going to be like definitely like five to six question that is going to be solely based upon the current discoveries of plants and animals and last year you had like two to three questions coming out from exclusively about the recent uh, discoveries of uh, like different kinds of fruits different kinds of vegetables or plant okay so we're gonna focus on these kinds of questions okay so we're gonna focus more of environment and agriculture right now because you all you already know that the indian forest service has been integrated to the main exam that is uh, with the rest of the ias and ips so there has to be some certain category of weightage has to be given for those aspirants who are preferring ifos so in order to give them a chance also upsc has given more of environment and agriculture questions that is you indefinitely going to get at least 20 percent of weightage for agriculture and environment okay so that is where our key focus is going to be so guys this series is going to be extremely extremely helpful for you guys for your preparation trust me all the key information that we provide here is all the ones that you go on that you have missed in your preparations so please take notes of everything because all the things that have been we have put up meticulously have been covered else nowhere in any other series or any other institutes okay so that is where the emphasis is going to be so guys so let's get started uh, so guys the first topic is something about an institute that is international food policy research institute that is ifpri so it's actually an institute which provides research based policy solutions to sustainably reducing poverty and end hunger and malnutrition in developing countries okay so this is an organization which is mainly intended to develop only those developing countries okay so this is where upsc test you that is it is only for the developing countries and it was established in the year 1975 and currently it has more than 600 employing employees that is uh, working over uh, 50 countries and it's a research center of cgiar okay so the main important point that has to be taken is it's for mainly for developing countries and was established under 1975 and the most important point is so like recently they have released the global food policy report so all the reports are like very much asked in upsc so this is where you should keep your focus upon so 2017 global food policy report is released by ifpra okay so that is where you should have to memorize these key institutes okay so you can read more about here and the second thing is there's community based biocontrol of coconut black headed caterpillar okay so uh, it's a trivial thing but still it can be asked in uh, upsc so like uh, so it's a pest which is going to be mainly affect the coconuts so it infects coconuts of all age groups and it's a prolific feeder of coconut leaves on the adult palms this infestation is going to start on the outer walls of the leaf okay so this is all about uh, the infestation uh, how it will affect the plants and how it's going to cause severe damage to the plant so the uh, species name is ospina opicina arinocella okay so it's a serious pest of coconut palm so you could uh, blindly be asked this types of questions also that is which is a serious pest of coconut palm or ospinella arinocella is a serious pest of what plant okay so this is uh, unless you have uh, no idea about what the species is about you can't answer these case, these kinds of questions so guys just remember opicina arinocella okay it's a main uh, pest affecting the coconut and there's a new species found okay so it's like so beautiful with purple color flowers and even the shape is looking a bit different uh, so guys uh, something about uh, the, the new the newly found plant species so it is called as emilia reddy okay so why this name so can you see the indian name here that is reddy so it was mainly to uh, to honor the uh, scientist that is nrsc scientist sudhag reddy for a significant contribution to the field of plant taxonomy and biodiversity conservation in the country so that is why his name has been added here and uh, this emilia reddy so it comes under the category of critically endangered and uh, so the most important element is so it is found in the uh, a Galikonda hill of eastern ghats near arak valley in visakhapatnam okay so this is where upsc will generally ask about the places and about the location of the plants and mainly this and it is endemic to the eastern ghats alone so Galikonda hill of eastern ghats near arak valley in visakhapatnam just do remember this point it could be asked in your exams as well and it belongs to the family asteraceae okay 
so the and it mainly blossoms between the september and february these are like additional points so just do focus it is present in the eastern ghats near arak valley and with the help of the reddy also you can uh, like find the geographical distribution of this plant okay so that's, that is how you eliminate like various topics okay and what are the main issues so like uh, the region is mainly prone for uh, like many rapid spread of alien species and also there has been like huge surge of coffee plantation occurring there okay so because of that it it, it competes with the uh, mle plants and that is where uh, its habitat is like seriously threatened okay and also there is a proposed bauxite mining uh, that is proposed to come in galikonda so these all the issues is going to pose severe threats to the new species so there's another scheme that has been surfaced recently that is kudira marath scheme okay so the question right now is as the phase of participatory management and maintenance of water bodies change for the better or worse so this is the question that is uh, like all the schemes are, are mainly implemented by the government and there is no public interventions or public participation so as the public participation has faded away quickly so this was the question that has been posed uh, recently so in order to overcome this question the government of tamil nadu under edapadi k palani swami that is who is the present chief minister of tamil nadu has revived this scheme that is kudira marath scheme okay so this is an ancient uh, scheme that is, it was like way way uh, like way way back practiced during the pandya period and there was also some myths and story regarding this scheme okay so the scheme the, the stories and all it's like the pandya king has ordered all the people of madurai to strengthen the walls or strengthen the banks of river vaigai okay so such the importance of the scheme so something about the scheme so it was launched by the uh, tamil nadu chief minister in kanjipuram district and the scheme envisages the rejuvenation of departmental tanks in 30 districts okay so it is nothing but it is just basically reviving all the uh, storage or pooling capacities of various tanks and a regeneration of various water bodies so mainly the works consist of deepening tanks strengthening bunds desilting supply channels and repairing sluices so like it is mainly it's going to help the farmers and it is going to be done under a participatory management that is people themselves will take carefully forward all the implemented schemes by themselves and they revive the, uh, all the water bodies for their own use okay so the scheme is going to be assisted by nabard okay so this is mainly important that is national bank of agriculture and rural development so this bank is going to fund all the important uh, schemes that have been uh, launched for the development of agriculture and irrigation okay so there is an also a day that has been celebrated recently that is international permaculture day so you might not have heard this word okay so permaculture is nothing but so just remember this might be also even asked okay so it's a mindset based on copious scientific principle and research while also drawing on the timeless folk wisdoms so here group of scientists scientist or a group of people who are well versed in agriculture education so they combine with the local people for the folk dumb wisdom that is for their uh, local uh, wisdom that is the 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 knowledge that have they have gained without studying anything based upon their pure practical uh, efforts okay so by integrating these two they have developed a new culture that is called as permaculture so this is all about permaculture just do remember the name alone it's a mindset based on copious scientific principles and research while drawing on the timeless folk wisdom that so it's a mix of both modern and ancient techniques okay so it was celebrated recently on uh, may 6th and 7th and this revolution has basically three principles that is care for the earth care for the people and return of surplus to the earth and people on fair share okay so this is how the revolution actually based upon the three principles okay so just do remember the word permaculture so it is more of an agriculture where there is a going to be a mix of both ancient as well as modern day practices so the next thing is kokum fruit so kokum fruit was recently in news so because of its high marketing potential so kokum fruit so this is how the kokum fruits actually look like so kokum is not an ordinary fruit it's a wild fruit that is mainly present in the western ghats okay so mainly it is present at the uh, udupi district at mulia village near vitla okay so mostly it is present in the southern karnataka and uh, this fruit is mainly used for uh, like squash juice ointment and various multi purpose powder also it has been like used okay 
and a dried kokum rind and a spicy value added product of kokum were among the major attractions and the ointment is made from kokum butter okay so kokum is actually a fruit that is present in the mangalore district okay mangalore district mainly uh, in and around udupi dakshina kannada dakshina is south and kannada is karnataka that is south southern karnataka near vitla so more or less it is an endemic that is an endemic fruit wild fruit of western ghats that is present in the southern karnataka so this is all about kokum fruits Uh, so guys like even though if you are preparing for your uh, exams very well from various sites i know you might not heard of these kinds of words such as permaculture as well as uh, kokum fruit and even uh, the new emilia reddy plants so like these are the types of the question that is going to be asked and they are going to place under the category difficult okay so like do follow the video for more and more such questions and i hope you really uh, like this lesson if you really like this lesson uh, do press the thumbs up button and do share to many as people as possible because this is where are important uh, purpose of serving people lies actually okay so guys thank you for watching this video have an awesome day